Uh, shifting gears now, Doctor, I mean, uh, we saw the international community commending Sri Lanka for holding the Northern Provincial Council elections. And I can say, in this instance, numbers do speak louder than words. And we saw the Lanka Tamil Arsakatri claiming 78.48% of the vote, while uh, the government, uh, that's the UPFA, uh, managed only 18.38% of the vote. Your thoughts about this election in the northern province that was held after more than two decades? Well, it's a very big deal. Uh, I'm personally very happy because the last time uh, I was part of this process and uh, when I watched the movie Madras Cafe, I was sort of reliving the whole period of the run-up to the provincial council election 25 years ago. Now, I wish that the TNA and the government recognized certain realities about the election, but I'm not sure they will. The TNA should recognize the fact that if the government hadn't fought that war and defeated the Tigers, there wouldn't have been a provincial council election. And uh, if there were, the TNA candidates, including Chief Minister Vigneshwaran, who considers Mr. Prabhakar a great hero, would have been murdered by Mr. Prabhakar on his orders. Uh, so it should thank the Sri Lankan Armed Forces and the government of Sri Lanka and the President for actually being able to contest and win in uh, that election in the North. That's one. On the part of the government, I wish the government would acknowledge that the vote won by the TNA is a complete and total repudiation by the people of the area of the post-war model of rule or domination that the government has erected or sought to erect. It's a complete rejection of the government's post-war policies. In that sense, if the government hadn't won the war, the TNA wouldn't have been able to win the election, but the government has won the war while having lost the peace in that area. That's my take. But the bottom line is Sri Lanka, the good news, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka is still very much a practicing democracy with its distortions, with distortions, with uh, decay, but it's still a democracy when you brush all that off. Because how else could the TNA have won so massively in an army-controlled northern province? And it's not the first time the TNA won. It's been winning from 2010. Mm -hmm. That shows that we are still a democracy at base, and it also shows that if you have an effective opposition, that opposition can win anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want to bring the opposition here because I think... Well, let's Waste of time, is it? <laughs> no, let's just talk about the northern province. And we saw the TNA grabbing the most number of votes here. Now, this is a province that has gone through a lot. It has suffered the atrocities of the war. There's a lot of rebuilding to take place, not just, I'm talking about physical development, yeah. but mental, spiritual development also needs to take place. We saw C.V. Vigneshwaran. Uh, he was the front runner for the uh, ITAC and uh, he bagged 132,225 votes. Um, the TNA is still discussing who it is going to have as its chief ministerial candidate but we all know yeah. uh, who that person is going yes, to be. Yes. So let's say whoever comes to the chief ministerial candidate position and we know it most probably uh, would be C.B. Vigneshwaran. What would his role be? What are the landmines he should avoid trampling? And what should he keep in mind steering this provincial council forward? Well, uh, he should uh, chill out with the rhetoric. I mean, now is not the time to talk about self-determination and, uh, uh, and stuff like that. Now, the main thing is to keep that council going for its full term. He must avoid anything that will play into the hands of the hardliners who didn't want the election to be held, who didn't want the provincial council system, or who wanted the election only after the 13th Amendment had been truncated. They are still waiting in the wings, hoping to destabilize and oust this newly elected council. Justice Vigneshwaran should be, above all, a pragmatist. By a pragmatist, I don't mean somebody who doesn't have principles. A pragmatist is uh, somebody like Martin McGuinness or Jerry Adams, who were, in fact, quite romantic militant guerrillas. But the way they worked the Good Friday Agreement has been exemplary. 
as to how you work within the limits of devolution within a unitary state. Mm -hmm. They've not even gone as far as uh, Scotland seems to be going. They've made uh, friends with the British Labour Party and even with the hardline protesters. Now, Justice Vigneshwaran should take Northern Ireland as a model of conduct and uh, have a policy of constructive engagement. Hansen has, as the TNA's victory has been, uh, the TNA commands, uh, what, at that, in this last election, 350,000 votes. If you take the totality of the votes uh, of, of the population of that area and the bit in the east that the TNA has won, I mean, max, we're talking about a million. Mm -hmm. You cannot impose the mandate of a million people or drawn from a million people on a nation of 20 million or citizenry of 20 million. So there are limits. Uh, I'm glad that Justice Vigneshwaran has said that they would be working within the Constitution. And I expect him to try to um, secure the implementation, the full implementation of the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, perhaps and to stretch uh, the parameters, but not too much. So he has to be very realistic about the balance of power. And what sort of role will the government play in this instance in the Northern Provincial Council? Is the government going to take a step back and uh, allow the TNA to carry on and see what it is doing, monitor what the TNA is doing? What is going to be the role of the government in all of this? Well, the government and indeed the country as a whole stand at a crossroads, a very dramatic historic crossroads. Uh, the government can either treat the Northern Provincial Council in a constructive manner, engage it constructively and hope to attract it. The government can uh, play the role of a magnet to draw in the North as a, a permanent shareholder of a united Sri Lanka. Or it can place the council under siege and try to undermine it starve it of resources and push it back to the wall. The problem in the latter course, which I'm sure is advocated by some uh, extremists now, President Rajapaksa has admitted uh, to Al Jazeera and therefore to the world uh, that uh, he has right-wing extremists and religious extremists in his cabinet. So, well, I think they're not only in his cabinet, but still. Uh, I mean, those elements will urge a policy of regarding the provincial council as an enemy. Was the I mean, there were people who were saying, I mean, during elections, uh, there were politicians who kept saying that uh, the manifesto uh, of the TNA had certain elements uh, where it spoke about cessationism and uh, that it was a manifesto that uh, seemed rather dangerous. Although the TNA really played it down by saying that it wanted the devolution of power within a unitary state. Well, uh, the, the criticisms were by Sinhalese extremist parties, which have done very badly at the election in the South. Uh, the NFF and the JHU nominees have all got wiped out. But the TNA manifesto is a little dodgy. I, I made criticism of that myself. I don't want to go into that. But it's a, it's, it's a new morning. Let's, let's try to make the best of this, of this situation. And if the government uh, tries to push the, the, the council, place it back to the wall, the problem is that the council's wall is a sea wall. Mm -hmm. There's no wall there. There's the Pork Strait. And beyond that, there's Tamil Nadu. And after that, there's Delhi. So the government has to be very prudent to try to win over the Northern Provincial Council, not through the jackboot, I mean it's tried that, it hasn't worked obviously, mm. Mm -hmm. but win it over, draw it in, the key word, both for Justice Vigneshwaran and for the President, the key word should be partnership. Right now I'm, I wouldn't even say I'm cautiously optimistic, I'm agnostic as to which way this will go, but partnership must be the attitude and the keyword. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, the government obviously did suffer a loss in the Northern Provincial Council. We all saw that coming. We all saw yeah. the TNA taking the baton here. But moving on to the other two provinces, we can't forget them, uh, the Northwest and the Central Province. And we saw the government uh, 
taking resounding victories yeah. in both these provinces. Over 60% if you take the averages. Exactly. And now I come to uh, the opposition. I mean, I didn't want to mention the figures of uh, the, the percentage it secured in the northern province because it was 0.68%. But let's come to the northwest where we saw the UMP having 24.21%. And in the central province where it had 27.29%. Uh, so the average is maybe 25%. Mm -hmm.